Hello, and thanks for staying up late with us on TCM tonight. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. We've nearly reached the end of this month's tribute to the James Bond franchise. It's part of our celebration of the 100th anniversary of United Artists. After License to Kill proved to be a box office failure in 1989, the Bond producers took some much needed time to figure out how best to revamp the series. There were six years until the next Bond film, by far the longest gap in the series. During that time, Timothy Dalton decided not to return to the franchise. He had played Bond twice, first in The Living Daylights, then in License to Kill. Dalton played Bond as a far darker character, more eager for violence than his predecessor, Roger Moore. The new Bond was an Irish actor, best known for a television show, Remington Steel. Pierce Brosnan. Brosnan was the actor producers wanted for Bond after Moore retired, but that show, Remington Steel, interfered. They had Brosnan locked up, opening the door for Dalton, who was seen as something of a failure as Bond at the time. But wisely, there has been a reevaluation of Dalton's two Bonds, and they're pretty good. Ironically, Dalton played Bond closer to how Daniel Craig plays Bond. Perhaps the audience in the late 1980s was not as ready for an emotionally complex, brooding James Bond as they are now. Anyway, up next, Pierce Brosnan makes his debut in the franchise's 17th picture. From MGM UA in 1995, this is a TCM premiere, GoldenEye. There's no getting away from the Bond formula, and when it's well executed, it works. So expect the usual elaborate stunts, chases, and gadgets across stunning locations with pre-naturally beautiful women. What's different here is that GoldenEye is wise to itself and makes sure the audience knows it. You can imagine the number of internal shouts of finally when Bond is at long last called out for being a, this is a quote from the movie, sexist, misogynist dinosaur. That was from the 90s iteration of his boss, M, played by Judi Dench. The screenwriters also finally addressed the monologue-addicted villains who invariably capture Bond, but instead of just killing him and getting on with it, they regale 007 with tales of their maniacal brilliance. When Bond is captured in GoldenEye, he acknowledges this has happened before, saying, what, no small talk? From director Martin Campbell in 1995, also with Sean Bean, Famke Janssen, plus Robbie Coltrane, Alan Cumming, and Samantha Bond as Moneypenny, GoldenEye. GoldenEye is the 17th film in what is considered the official James Bond franchise as originated by producers Harry Saltzman and Albert Covey Broccoli for Eon Productions backed by United Artists. The distinction is made because there were two Bond movies that fell outside their purview, Casino Royale from 1967 starring David Niven and Never Say Never Again from 1983 with Sean Connery. Saltzman left his partnership with Broccoli in 1975, and Broccoli continued to lead the franchise until his death in 1996. With Goldeneye, Broccoli's daughter Barbara and his stepson Michael G. Wilson took the reins as producers, and they continue in that role today, ushering in the 25th movie in the series, No Time to Die, due out in the spring of 2020 with their sixth James Bond, Daniel Craig. Bond's legacy is undeniable. Before the great superhero movies, there was Bond. Before there was Indiana Jones, John McClane, or Ethan Hunt, again, there was Bond. And up next, our night of 007 continues with Pierce Brosnan taking on a villainous media mogul played by Jonathan Price.